What's going on, guys? Today I got a little bit of a tutorial here on, well, it's not on Peyton Manning, actually, as you may have thought. It's on reducing your forehead size or head size or hairline or any of the sort. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a, uh, a new layer, obviously, duplicate the layer. I'm just going to name it here real quick so I know what I'm doing. I will name it uh, Working Layer. Um, just so we got it there, and we're going to turn off our other layer. Um, so we're going to work with this top layer here, as you can see. And what I'm going to do first is, um, well, we're going to have to cut out his hair. Um, so first of all, we're going to take the pen tool, but actually we're going to zoom in a little bit so I can just see where um, where the line is clearly here. And uh, zoom in a little bit. Um, you can do this. Uh, make sure you have your top layer selected. You can do this on um, backgrounds that are not so plain like this, but this one just worked because it was a lot less uh, complicated. And I'm just going to kind of outline his hair real quick here. I'm just going to go around it. Um, use the pen tool, like I said. If you don't know how to use it, it's really not that hard. Um, you can use it by clicking and holding and dragging to make nice rounded edges and stuff. I don't actually do that. I just make lines closer or further apart. <laughs> Excuse me, I got a little bit of cold here. Um, I make them further or closer apart uh, based on just the context of the hair, and you'll get the hang of it. As you can see, I pretty much outline it perfectly, and then when you go to make it a selection, the feather tool helps and covers everything up, and that's really all you need, so you don't need to do much more than that. Um, but you're just going to go around the hair and select it really quickly here, um, all the way down and around the sideburns. And for women's hair, it's going to be a little bit different. You're going to want to select the entire hair. <laughs> oh, man. i got a tickle on my throat here. Uh, select the entire hair, even if it's, uh, you know, po poofed out or fluffed out and stuff like that. Um, actually, I just went off the line here. I'm going to have to back up, and I kind of messed up his hair. I'm going to just control Z that out of there. I'll make sure you follow the hairline. Hey, for something like this where it's got shadows like this, it doesn't need to be exact because it's going to be covered up anyway, and this example is actually one of the easier ones. And here coming across the top of the hairline, you don't actually have to follow exactly, and it's even better if you don't follow 100%. Um, you kind of just leave this rough um, across the forehead because um, you want it to just flow better. Otherwise, you're going to just look like um, your head's not going to have the right shape if you cut it too close to it, and I even kind of went a little bit close here anyway, but it's just for an example, so it doesn't really matter. But you're going to follow along and come all the way around and just cut it and connect the two together like this. Now you're going to right click and click make selection, and my feather radius is at 7, you don't want that. I'm going to do like a 2 or a 3, we'll do 2 for this. Um, and the reason for that, like I said, is it kind of feathers in and covers up the the, the side here. Um, you're going to control C or command C and then control C or command V or copy paste edit whatever and uh, now you see I got the hair piece right here and uh, that's on top of the other layer so now if I go to move the hair piece and I hit the down arrow um, and move it down his forehead is shrinking or so it looks but he's got hair above that so we're gonna have to change it. Now right about here actually looks kinda perfect to be honest with you. He looks like Greg Brady. <laughs> Look at that or Mr. Brady, whatever. Uh, I just zoomed out a little bit here, so you can kind of see how it shrank his forehead. You see, I mean, this now, now you see how abnormally large it looks when I put it back to normal, rather than when you bring it down. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, to me, I mean, around here looks about right. So you're gonna p place it down in the area where it looks right. And his head, this picture just worked out really perfectly. Other times, you're gonna have to um, kind of lay it out better and merge with the with the forehead and stuff like that, you're gonna have to recolor it and things, and it, it's a little, it can get a little bit more difficult, but just basically right here, um, you're gonna take the clone stamp tool and select the layer behind him with the background, not the hair layer, the working layer that we made in the beginning. Use the clone stamp tool, um, hit Control or Alt, I forget which one it is here, and, and click a spot and then kind of overlay it over top of his hair there, and just kind of match it to the background and uh, if you have a more complex background this is going to be a little bit more tough you may need to put some more detail into it make the um, the pixels of the brush a little bit smaller um, and you're just going to want to kind of delete everything around that's poking out behind his head and uh, in this case you can see there's a little bit of a gray line around his head here where I'm working around and that's because of the feathering it kind of feathered it out nicely so it's not a harsh line it kind of blends in and bleeds in nicely uh, so that's what you want. And again, just match the background. You see these gray lines and stuff. You want to kind of follow them down to continue them. You don't want them to just end abruptly and stuff like that. Um, now this head actually looks a little bit small now that I'm looking at it here uh, after I kind of did that completed. So I'm going to adjust that in a moment. Also, his sideburns stick over his ears and stuff. We're going to take care of that in just a second. Um... I'm going to uh, move his hair around a little bit here and just kind of play with it. See if we go down, it's just, you know, you can go all the way down and all the way up. It just depends on how you want to be. Like I said before, it's a little bit 
too short, I think. Right about around here is actually looking pretty pretty decent. Um, and keep in mind, this is a celebrity, so you kind of are used to seeing him with a big forehead, so it may look a little bit odd. Uh, but if it's, see, see, like, look at that. Now it looks like a freaking alien, you know what I'm saying? If I show the original layer and then the new one, it just looks, you know what I'm saying? You see what I mean? So, now what we're going to see, you see this little gray spot as I'm, I'm moving here. Sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit. The gray spot, you're seeing through his head in the background because I accidentally cloned over that because I moved his hair up. So what we're going to do is select, um, we're going to select the background layer. Um, I'll show you, sorry, I'm... Don't know what I'm doing here in this video. Actually, I'm just clicking back and forth. Um, well, we got to do the sideburns and then the background layer. So I don't know which one we're gonna do first. Actually, I kind of lost track of what I'm doing here. Um, so we're gonna select. Oops. Select the. Which layer are we doing? What are you doing here, Kyle? What's going on? Okay, the sideburns. Okay. So we're gonna select the hair layer, but we're gonna have the background layer showing. And what we're gonna want to do now is just cut around the sideburn, as you'll see here. I'm going to start way down low, and you'll understand in a second why I'm doing this. I'm going to just cut around the sideburn just like I did before, and keep in mind I do have the hair layer selected if you look on the right-hand side here. Cut around his ear, all the way out, um, and the, 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 the reason, the, the part that needs to be detailed is right around his ear and his sideburn. That's why the rest of it's sloppy. I'm going to make the selection here, and this feathering is going to stay at two as well. You can do it whatever you want. Now, if you miss show this layer, see how it's going to select the part inside of his ear? Now if I hit delete, it clears it up and looks just like it's supposed to. You understand why I did that now? See how it just the sideburn looks proper because I cut it out properly. So again, show the top layer. Go to the other sideburn if it needs correcting as well. Make sure the hair layer is selected. Select your pen tool. And again, cut around his ear. And the bottom can be all sloppy. Just the only part that needs to be really specific is right around his ear there. Um, and uh, I'm going to do that here and just cut around it quickly. And then I can just shoot off to the side here and end the pattern. Uh, again, keep your feathering at two. That's fine. Right-click, make selection, and delete. And now you'll see um, uh, Command D to get rid of these dancing ants. By the way, um, just in case you didn't know that, um, and your know, layer deselect or edit deselect or whatever. So here we go. If you see right here, you can see the gray through his head. Um, that's because I or what I was talking about before. I cloned accidentally more of his head than I should have. So what we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to select the top layer and have it not showing. So I have the top layer invisible, but I have it selected. If you look on the right-hand side, now I'm going to outline the gray part and into the hair that is messed up. Now I'm going to make the selection, and I'm going to feather it five this time to make it a little bit more. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it. Now right here, as you see, if I show the layer, that's what's copied, as you can see his forehead right there. Um, now I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste it, and now, um, as you see, it filled that up. I'm going to just drag the layer down, I think, in a moment here, yeah. And uh, now you see how I covered it up, and it, you can see a little bit of an overhang there from where it's feathered, so I'm going to actually adjust that in a second, but it pretty much filled it in nicely, and because this is a shadowy part of his forehead, it doesn't require much movement. I'm just going to mess around with it here a little bit, move it around up and down and side to side until you see where it lines up properly and you don't really see it, which is uh, pretty much right about there where I'm at right now. I'm going to zoom out, and that's pretty much done. Um, this was really not that hard, especially this picture that I chose. Um, there's the beginning and the ending. It's really quite drastic. If you see somebody's forehead and you're like, man, that looks weird, or the hairline's receding and you want to change it, this is an easy, easy way to change it. Um, it's, it's just, uh, when you do it, you notice that it was a big difference, rather than, you know, if you're looking at it to begin with and you don't notice it. So keep that in mind. Um, that wasn't too hard. Hopefully it taught you something, you learned something. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share it because this took a little bit of work and I'd appreciate it.